load shedding challenges. This is attributed, as the president said, to the collapse of Murupule unit power plant. And he also says that it is compounded by the debt of two billion owed to South Africa, which supplies part of power that is needed by this country to Botswana. Boko also suggests that this is time for the country to consider building a new power plant to help us understand the challenges and the solutions available to mitigate the problems. We have in the studio the project manager at Solitaire Project at the University of Botswana, at Solitaire Project at the University of Botswana, rather Solitaire Project at the University of Botswana. His name is Professor Kevin Noigwe. Professor, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Let's begin with the, um, just looking at what the president said, that um, we need to consider um, the situation as very um, challenging and that perhaps it's time for us to build a new plant. Are we at that stage? Right, thank you very much. Uh, like you did say, I lead the Soul Train projects at the University of Botswana under the Clean Energy Research Center. And what we're discussing, what you are talking to is something that is affecting everybody, including myself. This morning I experienced load shedding. So when the president talks to solutions, we are talking to energy security. And energy security is something that is very closely tied to national security. And if the president is saying Merupule B has collapsed, he needs to build a new power plant, he's talking to national security because he's talking to energy security. However, it's also important to say that we have received communication from BPC, from the ministry, giving indications that Merupule B, one of the units, has been restored in the last two days, which has improved power availability and given a timeline to restore some other units. Out of the four units there, they've given a timeline. So, looking at a situation where BPC is trying to remedy the plant at Morepule, but the president is coming from the vast information available to the president. I think he's coming from the position of cost effectiveness. Is it worth it? Keep repairing your spoiled car. Keep fixing it so that it serves you. The cost of trying to maintain it, is it now surpassing the cost of buying a brand new car? I think that's the point from where the president is coming. And if you reason along the side of cost effectiveness, then it is important that we invest in new infrastructure, reliable infrastructure that can withstand all the challenges that will affect energy security. But whether it is going to be a coal powered plant or a renewable solution is something we need to investigate. Before we get there, uh, the choice is 18 months that the president envisages the project to take. Is that, is that uh, feasible? Again, when you are the president, you, you, have, you see a lot of things. You can move mountains, uh, in quotes. Mm. But if, you, if we come from the point of science, Building a power plant is estimated to take approximately four years upwards. And some of this time period include time for licensing, the logistics, and actual construction could take about two years or more. So, but if a president is saying, I want to do it in 1.8 months, it may, in 18 months, it means uh, he's, he wants to set a record that those of us from the knowledge side will, will come to investigate how did Botswana achieve this. Mm -hmm. So I think that what the president is doing is simply being motivational, being motivational. And this, this uh, properly aligns with the, the, the attempt to accelerate, accelerate energy security. So I think the president is, being, is projecting being motivational to say in 18 months we will do it. I, the president could quickly facilitate regulatory issues, licensing issues, but we must also remember 
that if we are building a plant as sensitive as a power plant that we expect to be efficient, we, we want to do it right, learning from the lessons of the existing plants, deliver the expected power. So I think the 18 months is very ambitious and if the president is being motivational, it means we could take a step and within that neighborhood, we could achieve a lot of things. Okay. What would you suggest um, we, we do? Do we, do we continue assuming that it is adopted, that let's build a new plant? Should you go uh, coal or now shift to renewable energy? Well, again, I'll go back to policy. The, every government, country, globally, and of course, Botswana, one of it, has policies. There, there is a po an energy policy in this country, and according to the, twin, the, the vision 2036, we, we expect to achieve a 50-50 mm -hmm. between the renewables and the fossil-based energy generation. The, why the president is talking to a, a coal power plant, there are also other initiatives in the renewable space. So I think that the country is trying to achieve the 50-50 balance but globally, people are averse to new investments to, in the coal power plants because of environmental issues, carbon emissions. So if you want to, again, it takes us back to the earlier issue of 18 months. If you want to build an efficient coal power plant, then you want to also integrate a carbon capture unit, which also is another phase of the construction, which could affect the timelines. So. As, I, as somebody who is a clean energy expert and enthusiast, I will naturally recommend that we invest in clean energy solutions, but we also need to know that we're dealing with issues of national security and energy security. The country needs to safeguard her base load. And in safeguarding her base load, we also need to work towards the policy where we want to achieve a 50-50 according to our existing policies. Mm. Considering the the, the the fiscus uh, challenges that uh, the country is grappling with at the moment. Um, the affordability part, can you say something about the possibility of Botswana to afford the new plant? You know, when a president, the man in charge of all the resources in Botswana says he wants to build a power plant, we assume he has the money. But of course, we're in the public space, we know that there are their financial constraints. Mm. But look at it carefully. Two billion debt for important power, yet we have load management. We do not have energy sufficiency. Again, what if the next country quarrels? Look at what is happening between the US and Canada. Mm. Very strong friends. Mm. And today Canada says, I switch off power if you impose tariff on me. So every country needs energy security. Mm. So if, if we can spend two billion Puller in debt to import power. Maybe some school of thought thinks this is even a conservative figure. If we look at the cost of not being energy sufficient, then it will be worth it to look for funds however we can and build our own energy security. How can the, the value of Soul Train project come in here? Well, th this is a very important question. Why do we have high demand? BPC says our peak demand is 640 megawatts. In your home, when you have power, what do you use it to do? You boil water. Research has shown that energy that goes to every household, 60% of it is used for heating. And this is where Soul Train comes in. Soul Train is saying, why do we generate electricity and convert it back to heat? Why don't we harness the heat we already have? by simply placing solar water heaters and taking care of our 60% base load in the households. If we do that, and one way to do that is to codify, go to the building sector, go to the built environment, legislate, get a mandate that new buildings and existing buildings have to fit in solar water heaters. That will free a lot of energy back to the grid if households adopt solar water heating for their heating needs, and that's approximately 60% of their energy need. You free a lot of energy 
and therefore the national grid stabilizes. Our peak demand will drop drastically if we imbibe what Soul Train is trying to bring to the table. At what rate then is your project being um, uh, featured into the, the, uh, the, the project or rather the, 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 the main thing of addressing the challenges that we have of power? Yes, we, we, we are currently working with the Department of Energy to basically our, our, pro, our project is a capacity building project. So we train experts on how to design, install, maintain solar water heaters. Mm. Because over time, there are many buildings with solar water heaters that are completely monumental. The solar water heater is a monument up there, not useful. So what we are doing is retooling, teaching the design, teaching the proper installation and maintenance of these systems, and showing, demonstrating that these systems are functional and serving. At the University of Botswana currently, we have just installed solar water heaters to eight of the students' hostels. And this will significantly drop the energy demand for the University of Botswana. We've also implemented it at BDF uh, Village, BDF Glen Valley, and so many other places, SOS Village, Tokweng. So we've, we, we are, in, in addition to training the required manpower in the space, we also build in demonstration projects, which are actually funded. We, we have... We have a scheme where some part of, if you want to install a solar water heater under our scheme, we are able to support you up to a maximum of 50% of the costs. The project is able to support you to implement that. So we are operating in that space together with the Ministry of the Department of Energy. In addition, we've also assisted in the policy space. We have developed a document to say, if we implement this roadmap, we call it the roadmap mm. to adopting the solar technology. If we implement this roadmap, this is how much it will free up the power need, the demand for Botswana. What would you say Botswana needs uh, to find sustainable solution to the power challenges? So many. But let me start from the most sensitive, tariff. Should we increase tariff? Should tariff be cost reflective? If we shy away from paying for what we take, what it takes to generate energy, then somebody is paying. And who is that person? Government. It is called subsidy. If we continue to subsidize energy, it has several implications. We, cons we subsidize fossil generated energy. Therefore, the, it appears like the, the unit cost of producing energy from our coal power plants is low, but in reality, it is not. It, it affects investment in the renewable space because it, it then now presents the picture that the, the unit cost for generating power from the renewables could be higher, which could discourage, in particularly, get investors coming into battery storage in renewable energy space. So we need to get to cost-reflective pricing of energy. Now, when you do that, people will pay more. The, the assumption is that people will pay more for energy. No. In, immediately you implement cost-reflective pricing. Energy efficiency measures kick in naturally. I do not want to gen use energy more than I can pay for. And I will quickly ask myself, how do I get energy efficient? Energy efficiency can regain, can bring back the benefits of cost-reflective pricing. And then it will, free up, it will free the grid, it will generate more revenue for government, and then government will do what we call repurposing subsidies. This additional income can be invested in social welfare and in infrastructure in the country. So I think that one thing that is key for sustainability is cost-reflectiveness. And of course, we need to harness where we sit as Botswana we are blessed with the solar energy we need to harness solar resources to complement our energy needs